So there was an incredible moment on Game Grumps about a year ago that somehow I just missed. Here's the setup. That's what's up. Yeah, that's what's up. What's what's up? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something real stupid. Now, Aaron, of course, has a long and kind of hilarious history on Game Grumps of loudly announcing playful, self-aggrandizing comments followed by immediate failure. Sorry, bro. Looks like you're just going to have to watch me... Um... Blow it! <laughs> More like, kill it. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> They're my favorite, and it's what inspired the Aaron's incredible self-confidence compilations I made a long time ago, but Aaron and Dan have played chess together since 2014, and Dan is a bit further along on his chess journey. Dan played chess as a child, he was part of a chess club, he consistently beats Aaron, but this moment, this self-aggrandizing comment, this might be the king of them all. And we'll see how it plays out in the end. Shit! <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> what, do you like this? Do you like this? I'm a fucking child, dude! I don't know what I'm doing! <laughs> Sorry. Just like beating the shit out of me all day, every day. I can't handle it. What am I supposed to do? I'm sorry. It's just that you just said like <laughs> it goes a little something like this. <laughs> Fucking shut up. <laughs> you don't know anything. Holy shit, Allie's losing it over <laughs> here. So funny. I'm trying to write notes about this. Can like... you... <laughs> oh my god. All right, we're back. All right. Um. Okay. Stupid ass fucking <laughs> dumbass chess. <laughs> chess is so dumb. <laughs> fucking stupid game. Nobody plays this. <laughs> this game will never last. This game needs a battle royale mode to last. <laughs> <laughs> no fucking way. Holy shit. Not only is Ali's laughter a wonderful addition, but what many viewers may not know is what's happening under the surface. So I actually play a bit of chess. I'm rated about 1500 on chess.com and about 1700 on Lee Chess and Blitz. I'm certainly not a chess master, but yeah, just good enough to deceive people into believing that I'm competent. All to say, Aaron has absolutely nothing to be self-aggrandizing about here because the context, which I'm going to show you, that surrounds this Game Grumps moment makes it even better. I'll show you what I mean. So I actually went through Dan and Aaron's chess game and plugged their moves into a chess engine, which will evaluate the game and tell us who is ahead after each move. Now, even if you know nothing about chess, this engine evaluation makes it really easy to follow along. And I'll point it out as we look at the game here. Okay, we've got the chessboard pulled up here, and I'm actually going to plug in Dan and Aaron's moves on the chessboard. I want to direct your attention, though, to the left side of the board with the evaluation bar. As I plug in the moves, you'll see this evaluation bar change a little bit as the computer calculates lines. What you need to know is that as the white bar increases, that's an advantage for white, for Aaron. If this bar decreases, that's an advantage for Dan, who's playing black. Okay, Aaron begins B3, and you can see the letters at the bottom and the numbers on the left-hand side, B3. Dan responds with E5. And you can see the evaluation bar wiggling around just a little bit. We're not reading too much into that. It just indicates to us that it's about a tie right now. Aaron continues Bishop to B2. Dan responds Knight to C6. Aaron plays E3. Dan plays bishop c5. Okay, and we can already see the first small adjustment in the evaluation bar, which gives a slight advantage to Aaron. I'm not going to go in depth as to why, mainly because that's not the point of this video, but also I couldn't speak confidently to the nuances of a chess engine. I'm just not that highly rated. But already here at the end of move three, we've got kind of an interesting game. In chess, we're often fighting for control of these center four squares. It's a general strategic goal. And that's exactly what's happening here. I'm unclear if Aaron is doing this on purpose, but he's doing just that. This bishop, here on b2, is exerting pressure onto two of those center squares. He continues putting pressure, or control, 
over particularly this d4 square with the move e3. Why? Because remember, pawns capture diagonally. So he's exerting some pressure onto this d4 square. Now this is just my speculation, but I think Dan is aware of this. So Dan is countering with pressure of his own. He has a pawn staring back at that same d4 square, a knight and a bishop. So if they're fighting for control of this square, who's ahead right now? Or maybe not ahead, but who is controlling this square more? Well, the answer is Dan. He's got a pawn in two pieces looking at this square, whereas Aaron has a pawn in one piece staring at this square. Okay, now Aaron plays c3, which even before the chess engine spoke up, just as I was reviewing the game, this already seemed a little strange because it blocks the view of the bishop that he just developed. And sure enough, the engine we see gives a slight advantage to black now after that c3 move. So remember, it's saying Dan has a slight advantage now. Okay, now Dan plays queen f6. Bringing out the queen this early in the game is generally not advisable, since it makes our most powerful piece, the queen, vulnerable to an attack. We generally see high-level players develop the rest of their pieces, get the king to safety by way of castling, then bring the queen to a good square somewhere. However, I think once again that Dan is well aware of all this with his chess background. I think he's going for a cheeky attack, given what I perceive to be his superior skill level over Aaron's. Why is that? Well, we can see the queen now eyeing this square, f2, and this bishop, even though it can't see this f2 square yet because of this e3 pawn that's blocking the way, it's indirectly staring at the square along with the queen. So Dan is aiming for some attack on this f2 square. Aaron responds b4. The engine says, yeah, it's okay. But again, one of our early goals is to develop our pieces and moving a pawn for a second time doesn't accomplish that. So if I were Aaron's coach, I wouldn't advise that move, but clearly the engine doesn't think it's a, a terrible blunder or something like that. So, okay, Dan sees that his bishop is under attack by this pawn and Dan plays bishop b6, maintaining this view, or what he hopes to be a view, of the f2 square. This is when Aaron blunders, which is exactly what Dan was hoping for. Keeping in mind this f2 square, Aaron plays, ooh, e4. Oh no, <laughs> the bar drops off. Why? Because it's checkmate in one, that pawn, has moved, there's no more blockader. Bam, lights out. The king cannot attack the queen, cannot recapture because this bishop is protecting it. Can't move anywhere else. All the other squares are occupied. It cannot attack the queen in any way. White cannot attack the queen. So therefore it is checkmate. Now given that context, Aaron's self-confidence is particularly hysterical. What's what's up? I'm gonna I'm gonna do something real stupid. And we'll see how it plays out in the end. Shit! <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> what do you like this? Do you like this? <laughs> I'm a fucking child, dude! I don't know what I'm doing! <laughs> so the clip works on multiple levels. It's amazing on its own, it's even better in the context of the chess game, and I noticed actually after making this video that the title of the episode is Aaron Loses With Confidence. Now that's a great move. GG, well played.